Hello, and welcome back to my Stitch and Addiction channel. Whether you are a new viewer or a viewer that has been with me for a while, I am very glad that you're here. I am excited to tell you what I'm working on today. I am going to be talking about how to make a corded petticoat. Cording in petticoats began in, late in the Regency period. Toward the end of the Regency period, they would stiffen the hems of their petticoats and even their dresses to make them stand out in a full circle and away from their ankles and their legs as they were walking and moving about. As fashion progressed through the 1830s and the 1840s, this turned into a petticoat that had rows and rows of cotton cording that went up the petticoat almost all the way up to the waistband. This petticoat would be starched and that would make it extremely stiff because the silhouette that they were aiming for was a bell-shaped skirt. That was the fashionable silhouette of the time. And so that's why they used the corded petticoats. So even though the 1860s is my first love, I love the large hoop skirts and the cage crinolines of the 1860s, I have lately fallen in love with the 1840s. I actually already made two dresses from the 1840s period, and these were both featured in our Little Women photo shoot a few weeks back. And I'm currently working on a Dickens Christmas ensemble, which you see here. This is the first time that I did not attach the skirt and the bodice together. I made them separate. Um, that was something that they began doing in the 1840s and by the 1860s was an extremely popular way because it gave them more flexibility with different ways to style their clothes. So I, of course, have to have a corded petticoat to go under this ensemble, so I thought this was the perfect time to explain to you guys how I made the corded petticoat that I will be wearing underneath this ensemble. And then hopefully in a few weeks I will do a video showcasing this finished ensemble because there's some more pieces that I'm going to put with it and I'm super excited to show it to you as the holidays get closer. Now in order to make the corded petticoat I am going to need cotton muslin. So even though the cotton muslin was too stiff for the chemise that I made during the, for my Regency undergarments, it is actually perfect for this corded petticoat because you need something that is super stiff and is going to hold its shape very well, hold that bell shape that I'm looking for with the skirt. In addition, I needed some cotton cording. So I did a whole lot of research and I came across a blog where a woman recommended using cotton macrame cord. So I bought the exact one that she had linked on Amazon right here. And I've also read other blogs and other seamstresses that have said they simply used cotton yarn. So anything that is about this size that you can sew in there and is cotton and will soak up the starch to add to the stiffness of the petticoat will work. But I'm really happy with this macrame cord. So I recommend that. I will link that below for you. Um, there's two different ways that they would create these petticoats that I've been able to find so far. One is by simply sandwiching the rows of cording between two layers of fabric. And that's actually how I made the first corded petticoat that I'm going to be showing you in this video. Another way is to take tucks in the fabric and put the cording in each tuck right before you sew it. And then finally, I found this even on some extant petticoats. It looks like they actually would cut the fabric and sandwich the cording in between and then stitch across the cording to hold the cording in place and then to stitch the fabric back together. I am definitely not going to go that far with my reproduction corded petticoat, but that is another option that I've seen out there. Um, I have also wondered if you could zigzag it directly on the fabric. I know that that would not look very pretty, but I think it would probably still serve the same purpose if you needed one very quickly. Because as you will see, making a corded petticoat is a long, slow, tedious process, but the end product is very beautiful. So here's the picture of the petticoat. Obviously it's put over a corset as well as the sleeve plumpers which were common in the 1830s to support the large sleeves that they would wear. As you can see, the cording starts at the very bottom of the petticoat, works its way all the way almost to the top, within about six inches of the top, 
petticoat is attached to a waistband and the cording slowly gets further apart as it moves its way up the petticoat. So I'm going to emulate that style. I'm going to put it on a waistband and I'm going to spread the cording slowly further apart as I move up and I'm going to do it within six inches of the top simply because that is the way to create that bell shape and if you do not go that high it will not create the bell shape which is important for the silhouette of the period of the 1830s and the 1840s. Cutting the pieces for your petticoat is super easy. My muslin is 90 inches wide which is about the width you want to make this petticoat. I've seen anywhere from 80 to 90 inches. Um, so I literally just snipped and then ripped across the grain on one end and then repeated that process on the other end. The length, I'm, I just doubled the length and added room for seams. So I'm making this one super long because my sister and I are both 5'9", 5 5'10". 5 We're going to be modeling the dress that this goes underneath. And so I made the petticoat finish. It's going to be about 38 inches. So I doubled that and then added an inch for seams because each layer is going to need a half inch at the top. So I haven't cut the waistband yet, but I will cut it to be this, the width, um, the same width as the other Victorian petticoat that I made, which was four inches. And then that gives a half inch of seams on either side. You fold that in half and that makes a one and a half inch wide uh, waistband, which looks pretty accurate to what the picture looks like. So the next step is going to be taking this and literally folding it in half and just inserting those cords and stitching it in. So once I fold this in half, I'll press it so that I see that half line and I'll just stick that cord in there and then stitch on the other edge away from the fold to hold that cord in place. Everything that I read recommended that you insert the cording before stitching up the back seam of the petticoat. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the cording first and foremost, then I'll worry about stitching up the back of it and attaching the waistband. All right, so I'm working on the cording in the petticoat. I'm having to alternate between two feet. So I use this foot, also my zipper foot, to go right along the edge of the piping to make that casing that it's fitting in. But then, in order to make the bottom edge of the next casing, as you can see, I've already done this one right here, even though I haven't inserted the piping, I need to go back to my regular foot, which is what's currently on there, in order to do that. I will say that if you were doing the tucks, there's two advantages to that system. One, you're going to use less thread because instead of having to sew on both sides of this, you're only going to fold it in half, put that in there, and sew once. The other advantage would be the fact that you can more accurately measure. Like right now, I'm just using the edge of my foot to put these uh, apart. But as I get closer to the top, I was going to spread them more like an inch apart. And that's going to be pretty hard to do by the time I get way up on this fabric. So I would say at this point, the tucks may possibly be more beginner friendly than the method that I have chosen. Um, even though it won't be quite as thick with the fabric, because of the layers of the tucks, it will provide enough thickness. So I have my macrame cotton cording here. And I just go to the other end of the petticoat and I switch my foot back to my zipper foot. I call it a zipper foot. I'm not 100% sure that's the proper name for it. It may be called a piping foot. Um, but I use it for all of those things. I use it for zippers. I use it for piping. And then I'm just going to take my cording. And this gets a little bit tricky because you're going to have to open up this whole um, layer and get inside of here to get it started. And then I just take my cording, put it flush up against that seam in there, and then close this back over it in order to sew it. Make sure that I'm matching my selvages up to keep this straight because it's starting to slant just a little bit, so I want to make sure that I get it back straight. Just put my foot right there on the edge, of course, double stitch it. And this part just takes time and patience like you just have to kind of run your um put my needle in there so this stops moving um you just kind of have to run your hand up in here 
and take your cording and just kind of put it up against that seam with your fingers and stitch a little bit. And then you just have to do it again. So just do that as many times as you need until you get the amount of cording that you want in your petticoat. All right, so as you get further in, you're gonna have all this extra, so just roll it up. If you've ever done machine quilting before, it's the same principle. I kind of pin it to hold it so that it doesn't come unrolled while I'm sewing it. And you can see I've rolled it quite a few times. Dealing with this extra piece here gets kind of cumbersome. So once again, this is a tip from machine quilting. You throw that piece over your shoulder so that it is coming down from your shoulder into the machine while you're sewing and that gets the weight off of the machine pulling and it's just kind of going down and feeding into the machine instead of the machine having to do work to pull it through or you needing a, basically a third hand to pull it through. When it's on your shoulder like that, it kind of distributes the weight and helps you feed it through better. So, roll your petticoat up as you're going up the rows to keep it out of the way and then take that and throw it over your shoulder when you're going through. So I have finally finished all the rows of cording. I didn't even count how many there are, but you can see there's a lot. So there's a couple of pros and cons that I've kind of learned as I'm doing this method. One, if you don't completely do a straight fold in half line, which I thought I had done a very good fold in half line here, but apparently it was slightly off because as you can see that my layers slowly slanted away from each other as I sewed up. It's not that big a deal. I'll probably just make the back slightly A. Um, it will not be a big deal. Um, but that's one thing. The other thing is that, as I mentioned before, it takes more thread than it would if you were inserting it in a tuck because you have to sew on each side of the cording. If you were inserting it in a tuck, kind of like I did here, you would just sew on one side and then open the fabric. Um, I'm very pleased with how the thickness is falling so far. I'm going to gather it and attach the waistband to make sure that I like it. But the other negative to doing it this way instead of doing the tucks is that it's harder to measure apart unless you have one of the fancy feet that shows on top your measurements. The further you go up, the harder it is to measure apart. On top of that, if you were doing the tucks, Having all that extra bulk that I had to show you how to roll and throw over your shoulder wouldn't have been an issue because every time you're stitching, you would just been stitching along a folded line. Um, so there's definitely some pros and cons that I can see to using this method versus the tuck method. I actually am now really curious to try one with tucks. I may need to make one for another model in the photo shoot um, soon. So if I do, I will definitely be making that one with tucks and then letting you all know what my preference is when it comes to making these corded petticoats. I will say I'm very thrilled with the cording. It's just macrame cording that I bought on Amazon that a blogger had recommended. I've linked it in the description box below for you. I'm very pleased with the way that that's come out. So now I'm going to um, even up my edges here on the back with my serger. And then I will do the normal where I sew 10 inches from the top, press that open, and then I'm not sure that I'll be able to press it open much with the way the cording is, but we'll see. And then fold back and stitch the opening. I've already All right, so I have sewn this up the back, and then I just pressed it back. I stitched it down, pivoted, stitched across, pivoted, stitched down. That reinforces this opening. The cording matched up fairly decently until you got really to the top. It was doing pretty good for about the bottom half. And then it got off as you went toward the top. That's one advantage that the tucking method would give you is that you could measure exactly so that you wouldn't end up with this problem when you stitch them together. 
However, I'm fairly pleased with it overall. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lay this flat along here and press this one more time so that it's nice and matched since it's two layers and there's not any bubbles in there. And as I go along and press it, I'm going to pin it on this top edge because then the next step is to run my two basting threads in order to gather it and attach it to my waistband. All right, so I've run my basting threads in the top of my petticoat. I have cut my waistband, so my waistband is four inches wide. That's an inch for seams and then fold it in half. That will be an inch and a half wide finished. And then I cut the length of the waistband needs to be your waist measurement plus an inch of ease plus an inch of overlap for the button plus an inch for seams. So basically plus three inches. So your waist measurement plus three inches. So I'm going to, when I pin this waistband, I'm going to leave a half inch extending right here before I start gathering. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I also forgot to mention, part of the reason I didn't take the cords, I think I originally talked about taking the cords up to within six inches of the waistband but I realized they needed to be stopped sooner than that because of the opening in the back, which is 10 inches. Um, I also just kind of roughly hand gathered it around my waist and it seemed like if I went much higher with the cording that it would be too um, weird of a shape. So of course this is my first time. We'll see if I'm right once I do the gathering but that is why I stopped. I stopped about 14 inches from the top of the petticoat fabric. So by the time I stitched that onto the waistband, it's about 13 and a half inches for the seam and then add the inch and a half for the um, waistband would be about 15 inches from where the, the top of the waistband. So. Like I said, we will see, and I figure if all else fails and I need cording to go a little bit higher, I'll just zigzag some in on the inside of the petticoat. It won't look pretty, but it will get the purpose done when it comes to the silhouette. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and gather this um, to the waistband and stitch it down. Um, and then once I do that, I will finish up the waistband and put in the button and I can try it on and see how it works. All right, so I've attached the waistband to the petticoat and I'm going to press in my seams and press the waistband in half. I'm not going to stitch this. A lot of times you can just stitch these waistbands shut. I'm not gonna stitch it shut because I want to leave open the possibility that I might need to run a drawstring through there at some point, either if I fluctuate in weight or if I need it to fit a model that's slightly smaller than me. So I'm going to just fold this over and then fold over my edge here and then fold it, fold the waistband in half. So that way that's still open. Even if I put a buttonhole in the middle, there's enough space either above it or below it to run a quarter inch cotton twill drawstring if the need arises. Um, once I do that and fold this over and pin it in place, then I will just top stitch right along there. It'll show on the outside. I'll probably actually top stitch on the outside. A lot of times when I do that, I fold this just slightly below the seam on the inside so it makes sure it's, so that the machine will for sure catch it as I top stitch on the outside. So I'm going to press those things, top stitch it, and then all I have left is putting on a button and a buttonhole. So since I created the petticoat on the right side, which is the petticoat I showed you how to create in this video, I also have tried making one with the other method that I mentioned, which is where you put the cording in tucks running down the petticoat. And you can see that one on the left side. It's also a drawstring waist because I made it to fit models, so it's adjustable. I like them both for different reasons. I do think that taking the cording closer to the waist, as the one on the left is done, does help create a better bell shape. I think that the one on the right, I didn't take the cording up high enough. I should have taken it up higher. 
And you can see the difference in these two photos from our last photo shoot. The girl in the green dress is wearing the petticoat on the right hand side, this white one, whereas the girl in the blue dress is wearing the natural color petticoat, the one here on the left side. And you can see how it holds the skirt out differently. So it really just depends on what you want. I think that next time I would definitely take the cording up closer to the top on the right hand petticoat. I think I just got tired of sewing cording because it was so many rows. I did stiffen the bottom of the left hand side one. You can see I put multiple rows in the very bottom as opposed to just spacing it more evenly like I did on the right hand side. Thank you for joining me on this journey as we made a corded petticoat together. Hopefully you were making one as we went along. I really appreciate you watching. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. You can also find me on both Facebook and Instagram as Stitch and Addictions. If you are interested in purchasing a design from me, you can visit my Etsy shop on Etsy by clicking on the link below. My commissions for Christmas will be closing soon, so if that's something you're interested in, go check that out and order immediately. I'll see you next time.